Okay, let's start. So thank you for coming, everyone. Today's speaker is Shin Myung Lee at KIAS, and he will talk about representations of quantum affine superalgebras from the R matrix point of view. Okay, uh, thank, thank you for the introduction, and also thank you all for coming in this uh, morning. So uh, I today I'm going to talk about my uh, recent project with uh, my doctoral advisor, Professor Jun Khan, and also the Professor Masato Kado from the Osaka Metro in Metropolitan University. And the topic is about the, some certain, basically the representation theory of the quantum affine algebras and quantum affine super algebras. And our uh, main character is the use of this so called R matrix. So, uh, my first half, uh, uh, the first half of my talk is uh, about some brief. Review on the representation theory of the quantum of fine edge for us, which has been uh, quite intensively studied for the recent 20 or 30 years. And also, there are, yeah. and just so basically, here is quantum of fine edge for us. And to explain this, let me first uh, quickly review about some uh, related notions of the simply edge for us and quantum groups, and also the affine edge for us, because our quantum of fine edge for us is kind of the uh, sum of this. Uh, I mean, the composition of this quantization and also the optimization. Okay, so uh, I believe most of you are quite uh, familiar with the simply, the, at least the simply algebra. So, this, uh, I, I, I'm, today I always assume that uh, I should work over C and also the Q is always indeterminate. And uh, when we work over quantum groups, the base field will be the this rational function, a uh, ring of rational functions, and sometimes this each algebra. But anyway, uh, so this simple uh, simple algebra, which is just a finite dimensional simple algebra over the complex field, is known to have a very nice uh, presentation. So this is generated by this triple uh, e i h i and f i, which where i uh, runs through one to n. So, uh, uh, so in particular, these HIs uh, generate the subalgebra, bra, so called Carta subalgebra, bra, which is an abelian uh, real bra. So, uh, for the representations of this simply H bra, it is uh, quite uh, very useful to assume that it has a uh, weight space competition. So, this is this way, and lambda is in the rear of this Cartan subalgebra, where this pre lambda is defined to be the simultaneous eigen, uh, eigenstates of this HI. So this is defined by the HI really comes to lambda, right? Yeah, and yeah. as I said, this is called the weight space decomposition. And I always assume that uh, every representation uh, of this top. Uh, we have the this weight space. Okay, then uh, every now finite dimensional simple uh, representation of this simply H bar, uh, finite dimensional real representation is given by the so called highest weight representation. representation. Uh, and as its name suggests, it looks as follows. So there is this uh, high uh, vector with height weight. So this uh, is a vector of weight lambda here, and this weight lambda is indeed height weight in in a certain uh, partial order with this weight. And every other vector in this weight space, or in this vector space, is generated from this highest one by just going down. Here going down means that uh, we apply this fi. So in the representation theory of simple algebra, ei goes up and fi goes down, and hi uh, measures the uh, it's kind of the with, uh, which floor this vector is in. Okay, so this is and there's uh, very well known facts of uh, this representations of simple algebra are very well known. For example, these finite dimensional representations are always semi simple. So basically, there is no more some uh, homological properties if we are only considering finite dimensional representations. So 
uh, to to understand this module carryover is basically equivalent to understand it's the cross and cross and ring. So and so we have to so one interested in some computing. So for example, the tensor product decomposition of these two years representations and and so on. And now it's very well known, and I want to explain more about. It. Okay, and next we we'll go to the quantum quantum growth. So this is obtained. Uh, from the universal enveloping algebra. So this is a Lie algebra, and in the representation theory, there is a, an associative algebra called the universal enveloping algebra, which has the exactly the same representations as the simple algebra. And by quantization, uh, we obtain the quantum group. And now uh, I won't give you the whole uh, presentation, but anyway, these uh, generators are looks very similar with this, except that now we use this cute i to the hi because of the, some technical reasons. And uh, this, uh, then, uh, then anyway, again, now, now the subway bar generated by this one is again uh, plays the role of this kind of subway bar. So again, for representations of this quantum group, we always assume that it is the weight space decomposition. And then again, this finite dimensional Invisible representations are exactly the highest right representations. Let's just use the same notation because this part is not exactly our uh, interest today. And uh, okay, the, these finite dimension representations of quantum groups are just the same simple. So basically, uh, the situation is quite similar with the previous simple data. And again, as I said, uh, so what, what is important here is to compute, for example, some tensor product decomposition. But because of the existence of the classical limit, namely, if we take Q goes to one limit in a suitable way with it in the quantum group, then we recover the universal enveloping algebra or equivalent to the simple algebra. So this means that there is a, a Nice uh, connection between the representations of simple algebra and the representations of quantum groups, and indeed you can we can lift every uh, numerical data from these representations of these algebras or to the quantum groups or vice versa. Uh, so basically, uh, the problems and answers are just the same. Then why should we do this quantum group? Because this quantization gives two additional structures, namely. Uh, the first one is now we have the extra parameter Q. Extra parameter. Uh, well, as I said, as we go Q goes to one, then we, we recover the classical situation. And in many cases, there is a, a so called crystal limit. which is just a Q goes to zero limit uh, on the finite dimensional representation, finite dimensional user representations. And what uh, the point of this crystal limit is that as Q goes to zero, then the many very complicated formulas in quantum groups or even in simple algebra gets uh, simplified so that uh, you can, uh, we can obtain some combinatorial method to understand this finite dimensional representations of quantum groups and also Finite dimension representations of simple algebra. So basically, this is uh, you can you cannot do this with the in the classical case because there is no Q, so you cannot take some Q goes zero limit. So this is one of the very important uh, point of this using the quantum groups. And another uh, important structure, which is more closely related to today's talk, is actually the R matrix. So basically, uh, even Two representations of this quantum group. We have a modular homomorphism from the tensor product of two these, these two representations to the inverse uh, uh, inverse product uh, reverse product, and this is the uh, actually the modular homomorphism. So uh, I will talk talk more about this imagery in the affine setting. So let's just keep keep brief, keep brief here and. Uh, this uh, gives an uh, important uh, application to the knot theory, for example, such as the 
with this well known that using this uh, armatrix and contour representation, you get many important not invariants, such as the Joseph, for example. And finally, uh, although I assume that this Q is always indeterminate today, uh, most important applications of these quantum groups outside the representation theory, or even in the representation theory, arise from when Q is a root of unity. This is just a remark. I want to uh, explain more about it. But some keywords is the 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 representations of the algebraic group over the finite field, or the three-dimensional topological quantum field theory, or the two-dimensional conform field theory. Yeah. It's, the representations of quantum groups in this case is related to such topics. Okay, and now let's go to the upper the edge class. Can I ask a question? Of course. When Q is a root of unity, doesn't the representation theory, uh, isn't it kind of a little bit different? Very different and much more complicated this. Yeah. So basically there is no classical limit because we assume this. So uh, so that's why uh, this, is, this case is related to the, the representations of the algebraic group over the finite field. So, so that, that's not a direct <laughs> application of what you're saying here is because the stories are different. Yes, that's right. So yeah. that's why I, I didn't write anything more than this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> okay. And now this uh, simply algebra, as I said, finite dimensional, indeed simply algebra, and there is a natural infinite dimensional analog, which is actually called the uh, first simply algebra. which is obtained by uh, generalizing this presentation. So I didn't say about this presentation, but uh, there is a certain defining relations, which is determined by certain matrix, so-called the uh, Garta matrix. So basically this is uh, always, uh, this is always uh, invertible matrix, invertible integer matrix, but by, uh, by allowing that this Carter matrix can be now uh, not not necessarily a full length, we obtain some infinite dimension analog, and this is a Ketchum algebra. But uh, the most important family of this Ketchum algebra is obtained by considering the core rank one Carter matrix, and that's the the affine algebra. So uh, anyway, I, again, I won't uh, give you the defining relations, but uh, the point is that now we have the very similar generators here, but now I is uh, runs through from zero rather than the one to n. So basically, this affine algebra is kind of the most, uh, in a sense, optimal way to add join E0, H0, and F0 to this simple algebra. Only correct one appears to the higher correct word. In affine, op, uh, you can, uh, you may regard this affine, the definition of affine to be the correct one. In general, in general, you can take any point. Yeah. But uh, it is quite well known that even even Katz says that uh, this theory of the Ketchum model algebra is a big failure, and the only exception is this affine algebra. So the general case is looks that's not so useful. Yeah. But anyway. And uh, yeah, so one of the re the reason that this affine algebra is successful is that now this uh, algebra has a very uh, concrete and another uh, another uh, definition, which is motivated from the completely different context. So uh, here we have a simple algebra, and we consider the tensor product of the simple algebra with the uh, ring of orang polynomials. And, uh, and there, this is a central extension, but I don't indeed uh, really want to explain it. So without central extension, uh, the, this bracket is just uh, defined to be Tm y tensor Tm is just x y bracket tensor chain tensor. Yeah, so uh, this is very concrete, and also this is uh, motivated from, some, for example, the, you know, the, so this is, this name is the loop algebra, so it already uh, suggests a connection between some loop groups or topological things and also some the conformal theory. 
But anyway, uh, okay, so, so let, uh, let's forget about it a little, uh, for a while. And again, for this problem, this HI, we define the Cartan subregister by H for this affine case. And you may con uh, think of this, again the same representations with the uh, weight space decomposition, but now this lambda is in the bigger space then. Although I just write the same notation here, but uh, this H star, uh, this is one more rank than this H. H. Yeah, but anyway, uh, if you play the same uh, game as in the simple algebra, namely you consider the weight space decomposition and cons uh, we assume that EI is goes up and FI goes down and play the uh, develop the same theory here, then you indeed get the very similar theories. So basically here now, irreversible representations are just be lambda. But uh, one different thing is that there is no finite dimensional representations except the trivial representation. So here, finite dimensionality should be replaced by the integrability. And then this, uh, again, this integrable representations are again semi simple. So as I said, the situation is again very similar with the finite dimensional case because now you, for example, compare the tensor product decomposition or now uh, the thing is much more complicated than the finite dimensional case. So much more is unknown for the representations of a finite edge. Okay, uh, and now we go to the quantum of finite edge. So uh, this is the again the quantization of the affine algebra. So this is uh, this has this uh, generators e i k i and f i from i goes to zero to n. But it is again equivalent to the affinization of this quantum group. So as as it, this affine algebra is affinization of simple algebra. So uh, in this affine algebra case, from this definition, it has another family of the generators. So I wrote this in this way, xik plus, which uh, refers to the ei tensor t to the k, and here hik, which again h tensor to t to the k, and let's forget about c, and this is the fi tensor t to the k. And again, uh, the, here, the, uh, this presentation uh, has a natural quantization given by the train pad. So this is the another preview generators for the quantum phase. So if you use uh, use again this presentation, so k, k to the ki to be a uh, weight space decomposition, and you go up for ei, namely uh, e zero to the an gets uh, weight increased, and this is decreased. Then you obtain again the same quantized picture of this. But now uh, let's consider this presentation. So as you can see now, uh, this part generates uh, a billion sub uh, uh, no, a billion uh, sub algebra but you know this uh, now it has only i uh, m plus one generators for the Cartan part but now it has infinitely many here l goes to all uh, non-negative integers and you have plus minus so this is all integers but now i goes to one to the end so there are one less ki but there are now infinitely many generators so already something's different and if you develop uh, again the same theory by uh, considering that this x i k plus uh, are again some positive part and this is the negative part, then we indeed obtain finite dimensional representations. Representations of quantum finite. So again, uh, some of these finite these representations are again decomposed to be the weight space. But now this meaning of the weight is much more uh, complicated. I will explain later. But because this now contains the information of eigenvalue of these infinite main generators, and this again, this uh, morally, this x i k plus should uh, increase this weight, and this should be the Decrease this way, but now features are very complicated than the previous one. And uh, another, uh, so if you consider, uh, so this finite dimensional representation, so quantum of finite energy is uh, actually a very natural uh, context from the 
so-called integrable models in the, or more precisely, the quantum spin chain models in the mathematical physics. So in a sense, this is uh, quite natural things to study rather than some artificial, some representation theorists, some dream. But and but if, if you want, uh, if you try to study this, then you get a uh, uh, you get the problem that the finite dimensional representations are almost never same simple. Uh, yeah, not same simple. So this is very uh, a critical obstruction in the study of the model theory. So when uh, when representation theory met such kind of situation, then one tries to find some indecomposable representations or compute X groups. But it is well known that to to study such things in the realm of the representation theory of real is very uh, hard and complicated. So there, uh, there's not so many things to uh, that can be done in this uh, model theory context. So instead, uh, the main problem here is to compute. Uh, tensor product structure. Uh -huh. no. Study. Yeah. Tensor. So again, this uh, has quite a uh, this has many motivations from uh, one from the mathematical physics because this, for example, uh, the this problem includes, for example, when to uh, to, de to determine when the tensor product of two irreducible representations is again irreducible, and so on. And this is uh, actually related to the, as I said, the mathematical physics in the, for example, to compute the the energy spectrum using the vector and such. And another not very historical motivation is that uh, this tensor product structure of these uh, quantum affine representations of quantum affine algebras is uh, actually very closely re related to the structure of the quantum group, and in particular, the canonical basis of this quantum group. So, and today I'm going to, uh, so again, my first part is about the review on, the, on this main problem and this and other things. Okay, so this is uh, this was the interruption, and I to clarify, uh, I want to talk about representation in for this representation in SPC, right? Uh, because so indeed, if we take the classical limit in this picture, then you indeed obtain the finite dimension representations of of finite algebras. But uh, to study this tensor product problem, uh, this side is, uh, in a sense, too simple. So for example, tensor product of two irreducible representations is almost uh, always irreducible. So there is nothing much uh, from here to, uh, I mean, by classical, in, in the classical picture, you cannot obtain much information uh, for this problem. So let's talk more about the finite dimensional representation of the compound by algebra. So uh, as I said, this quantum affine algebra 
Let's do presentations. I, I. It is more natural to consider this, uh, another presentation when you try to study finite dimension presentations. So, okay. I plus minus n minus and x i k minus. So uh, indeed, for finite dimension presentations, this q c always acts by one. So we always uh, reduce such generator. Okay, and as I said, this part plays the role of the Galta matrix. So uh, for representations of phi, uh, representation phi, we always assume that it is again the has a weight space composition. As I said, this phi psi, where phi psi is now defined to be where this psi is a uh, tuple of the Four power series, and it's uh, one another technical point is that it only uh, you only uh, it, it only sub it suffices to consider the only plus part of this psi when you consider the weight space. So that's just this one, and this is in this is but this way i comma k to the k. And again, uh, this is defined to be psi i l. I also I omit the plus here, so and minus psi my l three and zero or and. So again, this is the simultaneous eigenspace, except that this is a uh, generalized eigenspace. is because to uh, to assume that it uh, it is decomposed into the real eigenspace is too strong assumption. So we have to assume that this is uh, it only has a generalized eigenspace decomposition with respect to this infinitely many eigenspaces. Yeah. Then uh, again, uh, we repeat the same game here. So I mean, the, we repeat the high speed theory. Ah, and this uh, this kind of weight is of course much more uh, refined than the previous way. So this is called the air weight, and it's uh, refers to the loop because these generators are called the loop generators. Yeah, then uh, we can repeat the same thing. So uh, by, uh, irreducible representations are uh, obtained by high weight or air high weight representations. Namely, it has a uh, max uh, L highest weight vector with the highest weight psi, and other uh, vectors are obtained by apply, uh, applying to the highest L highest weight vector, L highest weight vector to this uh, negative x i k minus. And you, uh, you can uh, find these various representations as in the uh, representations of the simple algebra. Namely, you just uh, define some kind of kind of Burma modules uh, by the induction of the trivial representation where this positive part acts trivially and the Cartan part acts in this way and uh, the full component. And then you take some maximal quotient from this kind of formal module, then you get the irreducible representations. But uh, I I haven't said said that these irreducible representations are always finite dimensional, so there is some condition for psi to be to this irreducible representation to be the finite dimensional, as in the again as in the representation here theory of the simple algebra uh, to for. We, uh, for the highest weight representation to be the finite dimension representation, the highest weight should be the dominance. So there is a similar dominance condition for this psi, and it looks as follows. So, 
Can I ask a question? Yeah. The big side, mm -hmm. is that an element of the dual of the Cartan matrix? It's, it's, yeah, big uh, side. You never define what a big side is. Yeah, so I forget. Uh, and uh, this is actually a scalar. So, so psi of psi sub i comma l are numbers. Yes, so this is actually within this one. This is space field and in the, this is form of okay. Thank you. And this L to psi is finite. Measure if and only if to study I C this form of power series is of the form P I times P I C Q I P I C Q I. This Q I there are certain powers of Qs and you don't need to so uh, worry about this. And this uh, highest airway size is of this form. So for some polynomial with uh, constant term one. So it is a very specific form, right? So this, uh, this, uh, very, you can you can define this highest uh, real representation for any form of house. For any n tuple of form power series, but it is only finite dimensional when these psi i's are certain uh, ratios of the same polynomial pi. Yeah, and again, okay, as in the particular case, for two representations v and w, and for two error weight vectors. W side prime. Then in the tensor product, this tensor product of two vectors are actually in the weight space given by the product of these two elements. Where the psi psi times i of t is just defined to be the product of these two forms. So this means that uh, you can construct the finite dimensional illusory representations from the tensor product of certain specific family of the representations, namely the bundle interpretation. So fundamental representation. Vector parameter A and just scalar is defined to be the okay. A. I uh, wrote in this way, and this is just defined to be the uh, irreducible finite dimension irreducible L highest weight representation whose L highest weight is given by the everything is one except the ith one is given by the pi to be qi times a whatever it is. so i mean this is exactly corresponds to the the polynomial p j is uh, the i one is exactly one minus c to g times a, and others are of g. So you know, uh, we since we are working over the algebraic closed field, you can no, always pi i, we pi i, we, we ah, ah this is just uh just before just understand there's a notation so pi we pi i. I mean, yeah, so I, I mean, I think it's defining. Yeah, I'm just defining. I think it's defining that left hand side yeah. by the formula in the right hand side. Yes. Yes, that's possible. In the right hand side, no 
Pipe. Ah, ah, ah yes. That's the notation. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. yeah. So this is actually, uh, actually this is the, uh, the fundamental rate. Oh, but yeah, secret. I just took this as a definition. So you mean the L of something that is polynomial uh, or inside inside of the L? So this uh, so this is the so uh yeah so for for this if we define this one then so this this part is exactly this one for pi is to be. So this is degree one, so we have only two i, and this is uh, g one minus g a and c is specialized to be g to q i. Therefore, <coughs> given any finite dimensional representations. We factor the psi, uh, the entries of this psi, and so then we can obtain this E0. So pi i is i's integer many or? I? Yeah. No, i is, uh, ah, sorry. So, so this is the i so i is 1 to n. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is n entry, so this is only i's <laughs> ones. But here you add the l psi with the integer many. Here. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, there. Are, so infinitely many. But ah, okay. This i is from one ah, to n. Yeah. <clears throat> Small a can be any non-zero number. Yes, any non-zero. Yeah, so that we can obtain the finite, finite dimensional representations uh, by first considering the tensor product of these under representations. One in one. And you consider the sub sum module generated by the air height rate representation. So let's see this one. And since this uh, representation is for highest rate of the highest rate exactly this side, so we obtain the final dimension representation is the constant of this. So we obtain this finite dimension. I is from one to n or zero to n. One to n actually. Here is zero to n. Ah uh, yeah, so yeah, I I know this is very confusing, <laughs> but here I is one to n. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I should put in this j, but anyway. So basically, this is uh, in the classical case. This uh, x i keys are related to the e i terms or to the k. <laughs> And this is comes from the finite dimensional simple algebra, not of mine. So here this i is one to n. But here we have zero from zero to n. <coughs> so and then this way, okay, we can obtain the finite dimensional representations in this way, but Actually, it looks a little bit abstract, so let me give a example of how the fundamental representation looks like. So, uh, type A case is always the best. So, this is uh, for type A and minus one, one case. But anyway, here we have U2, S, R, and And let's see what the first fundamental representation looks like. So uh, actually, this is SLN, so here I should be 1 and minus 1. So uh, it's actually very simple. So it is n dimensional, and the basis vector is uh, parameterized by the So this uh, one 
So the, uh, there are n n slots and uh, n slots, and the only i-th one is one and i one two. So this is just n-dimensional vector space, and I just wrote the basis vector in this manner for the later uh, later part. As, yes, I, I didn't explain that because this is just as a vector space. So I have to explain the uh, modulation. Okay. Explain it. So first, uh, there is a subway bar, which is isomorphic to the finite quantum group, which is just given by the, uh, which is just generated by these generators from now one to n. You know, this is generated from zero to n. And we will uh, we exclude the E0, epsilon, H0 to obtain some subreach. Then this representation, this uh, this action is just actually given by the uh, natural quantization of the natural representation. So you know the natural representation of SLN is actually you know the this is just uh, consists of n by a matrix, and here the generator EI is actually the elementary matrix. Fi is another elementary matrix. K H I C I minus plus one minus. So uh, there is a uh, the uh, for the standard basis. Let's say uh, V I. And no, just this x, for example, e i times v j is defined to be that i plus one comma j v i. So I mean, this gives uh, e i. So this it looks like we want to v n. Here v i plus one and v i. Then by applying e i, we uh, we go up from i v i plus one to v i, and by applying f i, you go down. And by uh, just uh, quantizing this representation, we obtain the representation quantum group. So we just get the Kn, but with the same standard basis vector, and this EIA and FI is just the same. So this uh, representation of the finite quantum group is exactly this one. So uh, yeah. So if we uh, write this to be the EI. Because this uh, the only i one is one and otherwise zero. Uh, this action <coughs> is given by e i times e j is again the same. Okay. The same as that. So uh, from this to obtain the represent um, action of this alpine quantum energy bar, we have to define the action of the e zero. Uh, K zero and F zero. This is where uh, A uh, comes into the picture. So uh, now this E zero is defined. Th this action is defined to be uh, the. So let's consider this one. So this is. This one is the above notation. So if you take any other EI action, uh, A and or I equals to be one to N, then it should be zero because EIs uh with the one to the left, but there is no left here, right? But now E0 lift this one to the Rightmost side. So, yeah. So this is because this type A one minus the kind diagram is uh, like. Right. Then you can uh, imagine what is F zero. So F zero only. It uh, is the rightmost one. To the leftmost one, and otherwise all zero. But here, 
A is in this in the action of the E0 and also the F0. So this is the definition of this first one. So namely, uh, this is obtained from the natural representation of the uh, quantum group uh, by adjoining the action of the E0, K0, F0 uh, in this way. So this uh, definition of bundle representations looks quite complicated and uh, does, does not suggest anything concrete. But if you really compute something uh, for this representation, then the action is actually uh, quite clear. And you can easily generalize to the uh, the other bundle representation. So, I uh, L A for L equals to one to N minus one, as I said. Now, this is as a space. This is again okay, parameterized uh, by some vectors, which I denote in this way. So, here M i's are either zero or one. And the sum of MIs are exactly right. So this recovers the previous one because when L is one, then only one of these MIs should be one, and otherwise not. Sorry, double uh, pi L, you did right? Pi L. Yeah, pi L. L is one to n minus one. Yeah. So this is, you know, I I wrote here I, but for the later. Yeah. Right. Why n doesn't appear? Ah, ah, this is because uh. This SL and head is actually uh, rank M minus so 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 maybe maybe we can just use SL as well. So, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> then uh, you can define the action in a similar way. So for example, uh, E I of this M one to M N. It's again okay, uh lift one of mi uh, mi plus one to mi so this is, should be looks like mi plus one and mi plus one minus one and others are just the same but now we have uh yeah so this thing and let's just In particular, when m i plus one is zero, then it becomes minus one, which is not allowed in this direct sum. So, in that case, we assume that this right hand side is just zero. And so, when only is this one, and when m i was zero, then just this. Is. Sorry, but is there any vertex algebraic formulations? Uh, Yes, uh, actually, that's right. So basically, this choice of uh, entries mi to be zero one is very very many one, and yeah, but this is uh, not directly related to the vertex such formula because that gives only infinite representation for this final yeah. yeah, So and again, e zero is just the same, namely. Uh, it what a and minus one for m one and other side of this. <coughs> and a final one. So this is how uh, the fundamental representations are looks like. <coughs> that uh, thing in the right hand side of the EI action, the M I plus one bracket, mm -hmm. that's the quantum. Integer? Yes, this is quant Q integer. And you don't have it in the E0 action? Ah, sorry, there is one. But in this case, actually, MIs are only 0 to 1, so this is only 0 to 1, so... Okay. But, uh... Ah. So actually this uh, is, so if we only consider this action, so without this direction, if we consider this one, 
And this is also irreducible. I, I say, uh, here you write pi 1, right? Mm -hmm. V pi 1, right? Yeah. Uh, pi L. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so in this case, we can obtain the action of the quantum of algebra by X defining the action of the E0, F0, and K0 on this, uh, on this source space, right? But in general case, even if we have a uh, representation of the quantum group, Use your presentation, you cannot always expand uh, this action to the quantum of finite expression. So this is so so I mean in general the quantum of representation so if I I A is not necessarily Irreducible for the future finite. So this is one of the technical uh, difficulties in the different theory of the quantum. <laughs> yeah. So I just give you some concrete. Uh, realization of the fundamental interpretations, and I also want to give you a more concrete construction of the finite dimensional universe representations rather than just the tensor product of this, but uh, rather than just a sub quotient of this tensor product of fundamental interpretations. Yeah, so. Uh, This is where R matrix occurs. Okay, uh, so as I said, we have found L psi as a uh, Sub quotient of three. So now we are going to upgrade this uh, sub quotient, which is very uh, weak construction, as uh, much better as a. or more precisely image of certain homomorphism from the tensor product to the reverse. So this is called the vision construction. And this makes use of the uh, image of the quantum group. So, uh, the, in the theory of quantum group, there exists a certain element called the universe, universe R matrix. R matrix. R in the tensor product of two quantum groups. It's some computer which I want to see. So basically, this is some sort of infinite sum. So we need always need a computer. Then, uh, two rep given two representations, we may consider the three tensor W, and then by applying this specific element of the in the tensor product of quantum group. We obtain a linear map for no some right. uh, but the property of this universal matrix is that 
this uh, applying this uh, to the tool representation, this is actually the module home page. So this is because this universe I matrix comes with the common uh, element, common multiplication of elements in the quantum group. But anyway, uh, but uh, this uh, in the uh, quantum open energy case, this is uh, not very useful. So, uh, or rather, it is uh, this completion is not well defined. So we have to consider a certain uh, optimization there. So. So what this uh, VC means. So uh, so this means that uh, the the user action on V is twisted by E zero instead of ah uh, E zero time C instead of E0 and F0 instead of the F0 inverse instead of F0. So this is very similar with the previous uh, A, right? So here. G is a number one. Uh, so yeah, I have to explain and Z is uh, indeterminate. <coughs> so this means that we have to uh, inflate this V to be the Then by specializing Z to A, then we obtain some free A in the above. Yeah, but anyway, anyway. Using this technique, we obtain a uh, modular vision from the tensor product of two and to the completion. And then uh, we can normalize it if we can choose some uh, specific vector in this situation. So, uh, And in particular, when we consider the fundamental representation, there is this the uh, L height weight vector. J, then we have the height weight vector. We can normalize. I know this IJ, so IJ, there is Z, goes from times Z, times Now this normalization means that this so just in this definition, we should, uh, in that case, we can say W should be go to certain uh, some some extra scale uh, extra uh, small power series in the this one. But by uh, dividing this by F G. We obtain a normalized arbitrary which is defined to be by the normalization. But from the normalization, we obtain additional uh, rational function. But, but the point, uh, and actually, we can remove this completion. So, so this means that since these two are uh, uh, up to T, are finite dimensional, we can. Uh, consider its denominator. So, uh, and this is called a normalized dimension. Because it is of normalized. And there is this notion of the denominator. I. Which is defined by minimal degree polynomial such that the 
image of the R matrix times this denominator. is exactly in the this side, not without the question of This is just some uh, the formal definitions, but now here is an incredible theorem by Kachmar. which says that this denominator, <laughs> by understanding the denominators, or more precisely the zeros of denominators, or equivalent to the force of the normal sign matrix, we can obtain the very important information on the structure of the tensor force. So, first of all, the force of normal sign matrix, are uh, very specific subject for certain n now uh, suppose we are given uh, this bundle interpretation such that E i j is a i quotient a j is not zero for all i smaller than j. So namely this a i over a j is not a for of the corresponding i image. Then we have This tensor product is actually cyclic, namely generated by the tensor product of high weight vector. <coughs> so let's write it just this way. And duly, the reverse tensor product. generated by the tensor product with height weight vectors where co-generate means that every non-zero sum module contains this vector. And you know, this uh, is already quite uh, strong anyway. It, uh, it is quite rare to obtain some uh, cyclic module by tensor product of the representations, similar to this. Okay. So for example, uh, if we only consider two representations, so if we I I A and I I I J B. If D I J A over B is non-zero, and also the reversed one, so D I J B over A is also non-zero, then the tensor product of these two representations is exactly the simple. Right? So because uh, by the first one, this is generated by the V1 tensor, generated by V1 tensor V2, and by the second one, this is also co-generated by V1 tensor V2. So this means that any sub module contains V1 tensor V2, 
but this Pima tensor is going to generate all the representation, so this should be similar. But here, there is no I matrix here, so. So, uh, we consider the tensor protons. And for each pair of these, two, these representations, we have an I matrix just to find this in this way, and hereby specializing D to be the A I over A C. Then, by composing this uh, flipping of two representations, they need to some two to the t times t minus one or and we obtain the modulomorphism to the inverse tensor part. So this is the composition of this normal specialization of this normal language. Then it has the simple image. And, and in particular, by definition of the normalized R matrix, the highest weight vector should be mapped to this. So this means that, uh, so we call that we obtain this L psi as a sub quotient by first uh, factoring this psi i g to the uh, one degree polynomial, right? And if we choose the order of the tensor product, Suitably, I mean, uh, so that the, the ratios of this AI over AG are not a whole of this uh, normal I matrix, then we can obtain that simple module can be obtained as an image of the I matrix. So, F side image. So, this is actually much better. In the previous sub quotient construction. And uh, as I said, this theorem also contains a very uh, important information on the structure of tensor products. Here are some remarks. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, these now denominators are now completely known. So in every cases, in I mean in every types and in every uh, bundle of representations, these denominators are now computed. In, uh, this is not more than ten years ago, and so you don't need to. So here, this force. Uh, are claims to be belong to this space, but actually these pores are uh, the most complicated pores are looks like uh, if I remember like some q to uh, plus minus plus minus one times q to be some k times so actually this pores is uh, has a very restricted form. So this theorem can be widely applicable. So this means that, uh, if, uh, so I mean, so given this v pi i and v pi j, there are only finitely many pores. And if we are this, uh, these two ratios of these two spectral parameters avoid the finitely many pores, then their tensor products are uh, already simple. So this means that the tensor product of, of two bundle interpretations are so called generically simple. So this means that. Uh, To understand the tensor product structure of finite dimensional representations of quantum by graphs, then is we may restrict ourselves to 
study a subcategory, let's say CG, which is uh, in a sense generated by the bundle interpretations whose spectral parameters are uh, at most some should to be integer powers. So, yeah, so I, sh I should be more careful to cover all the general cases, but the point is that you only need to consider this very specifically. So, because uh, in other cases, the, the tensor products are always the tensor product of simple representations are just again simple. So, anything interesting tensor product occurs in this subject. Yeah, and third point is that uh, the theorem of Kashimara is originally formulated for the for wood water. I know this is maybe it's not, not so clear, but indeed Kashimara uh, uses the name of wood water, which is uh, which of course contains uh, this bundle of representations, but this is very restrictive one. So I don't know any other. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is very restrictive. So it's not so easy to go beyond this bundle of representations. But fortunately, um, this has a nice uh, generalized. Generalization by Kashiwa Kimeno. Generalization. Yeah. To the so called simple, uh, real simple modules. Real simple. So, real simple means that M. For simple M, M tensor M is a tensor. So this, uh, this, real, this notion of real simple is also closely related to the cluster uh, algebra because uh, in the monoid clarification context, this uh, simple module is in the, uh, in the canonical basis. And this this means that the product of two uh, of the I mean the product of the canonical basis element with itself is a being the canonical basis. So and uh, in the same spirit, uh, this theorem is also a uh, kind of reinforced by introducing some the so-called some D invariant. There are many references for this one. Okay. So this structure of tensor product uh, uh, product representations and these two play very important role in, the, in establishing the modern interpretation of the execution uh, tree. <coughs> but anyway, this is not the point of this point. And finally, uh, so uh, as I said, this uh, now uh, the poles of the normalized I matrix contains the information on the tensor product structure, and this uh, claim can be uh, made more explicit by introducing the action of the Kuber character. So again, okay. Introduced a 
general life, for example, a sure virtuality. I mean, which means that uh, even a uh, nice family of real simple modules. Uh, we want first introduce the Kiefer Heck algebra, which is the best generalization of Heck algebra, so RC. And this is obtained from the pole, this pole, uh, the information on the poles of the normal symmetric between this uh, representative. Um, and from this, uh, they introduce a counter from the module category of this cubic algebra to the uh, module, module category of the quantum branch. So this means that we can use the representation theory of the cubic algebra to uh, study this quantum algebra, or in a sense, these representations of cubic algebra controls the representations of the quantum. Since this cubic algebra is, uh, is again introduced in terms of the poor distribution of the normalized symmetry, this means that the poor distribution of the normalized symmetry indeed. Uh, controls the tensor product structure of the representation of quantum biology. G means the great gradient. Yes, that's right. It's great. R R C is the quiver Heck algebra. Is that what you said? Yes, R C is the quiver. Yeah, so I only have ten minutes to explain my uh, research. So, uh, okay, so we know that uh, now the force of or, or the denominator of this R, R matrix uh, contains the tensor product of structure. Then uh, I would, ah, then actually from this, uh, using this functor, this means that If we can find a uh, nice this kind of nice families uh, L I for some representations of quantum by algebra and also another family for another quantum of by algebra, not necessarily the same such that uh, there, oh, so that's it. such that there are matrix or let's uh, see there are matrix are in a sense the same. Then we can expect a similar tensor product structure. Even if this Li and Lij primes comes from the different quantum function. So indeed using this functor, they they obtain a concrete connection between, so for example, the you choose the type A and one, and also finding a similar uh, finding of family with the same for uh, distribution. They obtain a connection between two different quantum algebras by using the interpolating action of the general yeah. Okay, so my uh, my research is about. Uh, in a sense, about uh, apply, applying this idea to the for, first of all, the representations of the quantum affine super algebras or the infinite dimensional representations of quantum affine algebras or any other uh, kinds of representations. 
So uh, let me briefly uh, explain the concept. <laughs> So, uh, namely, the point is that <clears throat> uh, given a nice family of the represent or well-known family of the representations of the quantum of fine algebra, we have to find another family of another quantum of fine algebra or super algebra with the same R matrix. And uh, our approach is to uh, use the notion of the super or the yeah, or so. But is it is it, is it General or a special case? I mean, we have a different one. Mm. Uh, uh, sometimes they can be same, or sometimes they can be different. Different cases still. Yes. Uh, so basically, this is a uh, uh, idea. This is not a theorem, but but I think this is a very important idea. <laughs> yes, and uh, we, uh, I and my collaborators are trying to uh, make this idea to the theorem in our super setting. Yeah, but anyway, so. So. Let's try this one. So, uh, no, the, uh, as, as you pointed out, the on the interpretations, uh, of the type A quantum of algebra as, uh, in a sense, a fermion linearization, right? This is M N and M I are only zero or one. Uh, So let's see what happens if we replace this M I to be the bosonic degree of freedom. Namely, this M I can be non-negative integers and some of M I is still active. Right then, uh, Quite surprisingly, the same formula indeed uh, defines the action of this quantum of fine algebra on this bosonic analog. Bosonic. Oh. Oh, why do you call it bosonic uh, Because this uh, now m i s are in the non-negative integer, so this means that you can. Uh, stack the same, yeah. Uh, okay, I, 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 yeah, yeah. So in the upper case, of, so polynomial. Yes, this is zero to yeah to call it maybe we, I can call it this a fermionic realization of the I R. Then yeah, you can naturally consider the boson Then uh. By the same argument, we can define the normalized I matrix. And I, I didn't explain what uh, what does it mean that to compute the normalized I matrix? But you, we can compute that this normalized I matrix is indeed the same as the L1, L2, G, if uh, L1, L2 are smaller than N, and and L1 plus L2 is much smaller. So this condition, uh, we, we need this first condition because we all, uh, this V pi i are only defined for 
uh, 1, 2, and minus 1. So otherwise, this is not really fine. And this condition occurs because uh, uh, the tensor product uh, is uh, quantum uh, representations of finite type quantum group, not the quantum finite group. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Oh, sorry, this one. one. I R two as a Q as a N module uh, as a degeneracy in the temporary composition. I mean, uh, so it is well known that the Oh, I, uh, I, I don't know not explain it, but anyway, so this means that to obtain this uh, equip, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the, the same R matrix, we obtain first that uh, we obtain a sufficiently large matrix. So then we can uh, claim that these tensor products of structure for M. Structure of W L one L one similar But how uh, can you? But how did we comp compute this one? is to uh, introduce, well, actually in this case, this is quite simple, so you can indeed compute this directly, but in general, it is very hard, so one, our idea is to introduce their super analog. So this is my final part, so. So now we fix the epsilon to be sequence of u and one, and we define w l comma epsilon to be the uh, similar vector space, but which is now supersymmetric for example, which means that now m i is in the non-negative integer if epsilon i is zero and is in zero or one. If epsilon i is one, so this means that epsilon i indicates that that position is fermionic, and epsilon i zero means that this is also, so this is the their uh, mixture. So this is a super symmetric version. So it is natural to expect that they are super analog of this quantum algebra actually, so called uh, generalized quantum group. Then uh, from the supersymmetric analog to obtain the, uh, the bosonic analog, we just uh, put every, uh, we just take everything. Uh, so, so if, if you understand this basis vector to be some supersymmetric mon monomer, then we just put uh, x i to be all zero if you are i is one. So I mean, to, uh, to remove all the permanent degree of freedom, you obtain the bosonic one, and you consider similar reduction for bosonic one, you get the permanent. So this procedure can be generalized to obtain a certain Functors between the Bojo category. So in this case, we have a, a the the fi category finite dimension representations of the of this quantum finite algebra, and here are the same. 
And you know, uh, here this our supersymmetric analog okay, corresponds to here the our fundamental representations and here the bosonic acid. So using this functor, which is uh, has very nice properties, we can lift the known uh, properties here, such as the the I matrix, or more precisely the spectral decomposition I matrix. Uh, the first lift to here and then go down to, to compute the I matrix for this one from uh, from this one. And yeah, and so so this picture can be generalized to any uh, more general. Uh, Type so types and uh, finally uh, the, the previous uh, theories of this uh, representations of quantum energy edge plus using the I matrix can be generalized to this uh, supersetting so that for example from the now we can we obtain the I matrix the I matrix here so we know the denominator so then we can define the cubic uh, algebra direction. And, and you can easily see that these are all commutes. So this chunk, this functor called the truncation is very nice. And in this specific case, uh, you can prove that this can this this uh cubic algebra sections goes to weak balance as our rank goes to infinity. So this means that uh, these truncations are becomes only balance at the infinity rank. So that this uh proof this makes this idea the proof because you know, the, we know that they have the same denominators and so we think that their tensor product structures are similar and we indeed prove that uh these truncation functors are equivalent so you go up and down to obtain the So sorry for sorry for being too late and this is my this is an antecedent of my talk. Thank you. X I equal zero. Ah, so so this is just uh uh so I mean okay, so as a subspace of this this one, let uh I can write this in. So M M now uh M i's are always zero if epsilon i is one epsilon i is two. So you can find this uh, our bosonic analog as a subspace of this one, and uh, this subspace is obtained by the uh, by forcing that this entry should be zero if it is the the fermion, fermion one. 